Hello friends, welcome back and as I said, now we will be going ahead with very important concepts of reinforcement, revitalization, repositioning, so many re's, you know, but very, very important because when I will be briefly discussing with you the concept of brand life cycle, you would realize that it is a journey and you have already got the point because we have sort of uh, you know seen progressions in terms of let us say a value chain, in terms of a pyramid, in terms of architecture. So, so you have that, that idea already that uh, you know the, there is uh, a life cycle kind of a perspective associated with there, there is a progression kind of a thing basically. So, uh, but, but still it would be strengthened with that kind of a discussion. Now, before I introduce uh, those elements of revitalization, reinforcement uh, and repositioning, uh, let me uh, you know uh, talk about those in the form of a continuum actually. So, you see brand management continuum uh, is suggestive of that reinforcement and remind strategy focuses on reminding the customers why they like and use the brand. So, here probably they are distracted, they are going towards other kinds of brands, other brands, they are attracted more towards other brands, competitive brands and, uh, and then here you want to remind them. The firm is saying nothing fundamentally new, simply repeating and reiterating existing marketing messages, strengthening whatever they have been saying. Then there is an element of refreshment, refresh involves giving customers new reasons to continue using the brand without fundamentally changing the positioning. For example, Coca Cola, so it is a huge brand, large brand with a great brand value, just visit Interbrand website and you would realize that. Then there is an element of revitalize. It refers to the set of activities a brand undertakes to stay relevant in changing the environment. Then there is an element of repositioning. Repositioning is a fundamental strategy, a radical strategy. It is often required for various reasons, some of the firms uh, making uh, others in response to market forces or competitors actions. It is seldom successful and is invariably very expensive, you know, uh, we, we may say that. But again the point is that is according to the understanding of the authors who have worked upon this, we have uh, a source here for you. Uh, it is, uh, you know, Jevon C. P. Uh, Eving M. T. and Khalil E. L. 2007 Managing Brand Demise, Journal of General Management. Uh, so, so, but, but again there are several authors who have worked upon these kind of things. So, the point here is which, which the authors want to make through their research and several other authors as well that repositioning is a difficult thing to do. Why? Because you have established the image of your brand in the minds of the customers. You have, you have established, mark these words and then you have to destabilize that image and re-stabilize, you know, re-establish something. So, repositioning, you have to recreate an image or, or let us say restructure an image in the minds of the customer. It is it's a, it's, it's a difficult thing basically. Imagine that you have a particular image in the minds of uh, your, your peer group for example. Now, you just want to, uh, you know, reposition yourself. It is it's a, it's a difficult thing. So, then relaunch is an even more extreme strategy and limited uh, success rate. Then retire is a strategy where the firm voluntarily culls the brand and we will be talking about these that there are several examples on you know uh, for example, uh, Dabur has once tried uh, to reposition itself, they have done it successfully should I say. So, that was a successful attempt and, uh, and then they, they did a very fine job in doing that, it is a very meticulous kind of an exercise. And then you know relaunching for example, Maggie noodles, they have tried to relaunch themselves and they have uh, you know done a good job as well. So, 
and all these organizations I am talking of, they have large panel of experts with them, they have intelligent brains with them and, and uh, that is what we should admire because when we say that this is a strategy, we should not forget that there are strategists behind that, they are, they are eminent people who understand these concepts well and that is the purpose of these kind of courses wherein we wish for this understanding to be inculcated in our mind so that later on we may also become one of those experts someday. Now, then uh, you know there are many products which which uh, retire in due course of time and uh, there is a graphical or, or let us say linear progression in front of you. Now, it describes you know brand management continuum describes the kinds of strategic position options available for the managers. The first three and a half of the strategies that is reinforce, remind, refresh and half of revitalize that is three and a half. So, first three and a half of the strategies are more evolutionary and proactive, revitalize is essentially midpoint on the scale as the authors say and then the second three and a half are increasingly more revolutionary, reactive, difficult, risky and potentially costly as the author says again. So, that is where uh, you know it, it comes to the midpoint of revitalization and then goes towards retire that is what they have observed in their researches. And then there are several other researches, but the concepts uh, somewhere in an, uh, are mentioned integrated fashion somewhere and somewhere disparately or, or uh, in a disintegrated fashion, but concepts remain there. Now, let us see what how, how we should be looking at reinforcement, revitalization and repositioning in, in continuation. So, let us take an example first, arrow uh, and it is a wonderful uh, you know example uh, and, and uh, again uh, this is from uh, the case of arrow shirts in Indian context published by Harvard Business Publishing and the author is S. Ramesh Kumar, Amod Chaudhary and the title is brand revitalizing and brand reinforcement. So, and it is about arrow shirts. So, it is it is from a good source and uh, definitely good authors. This, this case study talks about that with several brands in premium shirt market, the arrow brand faced the challenge of balancing its premium associations that had been nurtured in the past to make the brand contemporary. The, con the concept of premiumness with regard to the category had undergone a shift with equally strong brands comparable to the Aero brand strengthening their positioning on premiumness. Aero faced several challenging decisions that involved its original positioning. Now, it is interesting and, and we are sort of wondering on you know. Uh, revitalization, reinforcement, repositioning. As competition intensified, Arrow was searching answers for how to alter brand imagery and, and just, just mark these words, you know. Uh, you have created an image and you want to alter that. How positioning the brand from expensive, exclusive to casual, sporty and colorful, you know should be done. So, that is that is where the dilemma of arrow comes in and I will be taking you along with this example to you know different kinds of concepts which we are uh, uh, talking about and several other examples as well. Now, you see the brand is manufactured and marketed by Arvind brands and had the tagline the earlier uh, you know days it was the finest shirt you will ever put on authentic American style and this was the earlier tagline they had as the author says and the present tagline is when you know. So, authors have, have uh, you know uh, done this case study and uh, gone through primary or secondary sources. Then there is an element of improved brand image, arrow switched over the focus to lifestyle rather than just a merchandise and their marketing communications projected lifestyle images to strengthen positive image. So, you have to stay with what you have been while going ahead 
in terms of being contemporary as well. Improved brand awareness wherein they started new line of casual clothing and the brand extended new line of products Arrow Women and they also entered the footwear market. Increased the distribution channel and points and extended tie-ups with e-commerce websites to increase visibility and sales. Now, uh, when they were doing this, they came up with an interesting campaign wherein they showed uh, Mr. O.P. Khanna uh, who uh, have been a very pivotal figure in uh, Indian, uh, you know, uh, automotive industry especially. So, uh, and he has played several other important roles basically and, and uh, he uh, steered an NGO also which played a very important role for uh, you know uh, cardiac patients who could not afford cardiac treatments. So, so he has done a great job, he has been a lauded and uh, you know uh, kind of an, an awarded personality and, and uh, you know a kind of uh, a benchmark for many uh, people in this country. So, an IITN definitely. So, uh, Mr. Khanna was shown in this campaign wherein you know he wears uh, arrow apparels. So, so uh, you know kind of they brought in people who played a very important role in Indian landscape and suggesting that arrow has been associated with people since and arrow has been you know uh, in the roots of this country and now contemporarily also they are making a mark basically by bringing in Mr. O.P. Khanna as the brand icon. So, that is that is an interesting campaign you watch it on YouTube and you would realize and, and uh, definitely uh, Mr. Khanna has uh, done so much in his life. So, so the, the point is that arrow could make a point actually and that campaign yielded lots of lots of uh, you know results for them. So, and we are talking of the concepts of reinforcement, revitalization, repositioning. Now, let me take you to reinforcement precisely at this moment. So, marketers must actively manage brand equity over time by reinforcing the brand meaning and if necessary by adjusting the marketing program to identify new sources of brand equity. That is what precisely we are trying to understand. That is why I mentioned about the campaign of Arrow and that is why we to focused upon the case study as well. Brand reinforcement includes regular monitoring of a product at all the levels of product life cycle and I would definitely try to associate this element with brand life cycle as well and I have already suggested that uh, it is an evolving concept although product life cycle is an established mature concept wherein you have introduction stage, growth stage, matur maturity stage and decline stage. We have talked about uh, this in our discussion on product management and there were two other stages which I talked about the saddle stage as well as the revitalization stage before the de decline stage. So, uh, this is to keep a check on the changes in the taste and the preferences of the customers. Brand equity can be strengthened by marketing initiatives that continuously communicate the brand's relevance to customers in terms of brand awareness and brand image. So, that is where the structure comes in. Try to connect this uh, you know description with the example I have just talked about. Let us look at these examples Mahindra, Tata's, Hero, Hero Motors, Hero Motocop. LG and there is a long list and you would find that they have reinforced their brand strength in due course of time. Many a times they have uh, you know revitalized few of the associated brands or let us say you know some, some secondary brand associations in due course of time to, to come up with a complete strength. But as corporate brands they have reinforced themselves many times historically and successfully too. And, and we have talked about Tata's in our last section wherein I uh, mentioned about the current brand value of Tata's and, and uh, I mentioned uh, you know that uh, in 1998-99 it was not that much 
Mahindra's also, if you will study, you would realize that they have done an exceptional job as far as this thing goes. And then Hero Motors definitely is an iconic organization in this country. Uh, LG, they also, you know, they have gone through uh, several kinds of stages and then, but still they have done very well. So these all exam, all these examples, if you will just go into the narratives, you will, you will uh, realize that, you know, uh, just, just, just if you will look into their story, you would realize that there is a strong context of reinforcement as far as the situation goes. Now let us look at this, uh, you know, chart in front of us and let us look at reinforcement uh, strategies and, and uh, this, this is a sort of a progression which, uh, uh, you know, one must think of wherein brand reinforcement strategies has two elements of brand awareness and brand image, I just mentioned about those and then from a combination of brand awareness and brand image, you have innovation in product design, manufacturing and merchandising on the one hand and on the other hand, relevance in user and usage imagery. Now, brand awareness and brand image, uh, I should mention here, are constituted of, for example, awareness is related to what product, products does the brand represent, what benefit does it supply, what needs does it satisfy. Then image is associated with how does the brand make products superior, what strong, favorable and unique brand associations exist in customers' minds and then this combination as I said goes towards innovation in product design, manufacturing and merchandising and re relevance in user and usage imagery and then this combination traverses into consistency in amount and nature of marketing support, continuity in brand meaning, changes in marketing tactics, protecting sources of brand equity and we have been focusing upon understanding how to identify the sources of brand equity uh, when we were talking of brand research, brand valuation and those kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, aspects. And then there is trading of marketing activities for 245 versus leverage brand equity. So, that is how this, this strategic progression traverses from this place to that place and uh, this is adopted from Keller et al. 2020 page 500. Now, according to Keller 2012, brand reinforcement involves the following aspects. Maintaining brand consistency, we have talked about consistency earlier as well, which is a very important element for us to understand that customers should not feel that today the brand must be deciphered as something else. McDonald's should connote the same, same aspects, same features, same attributes, same feelings, same emotions as it has been doing. Protecting sources of brand equity, that is again a very important element of as far as you know, uh, reinforcement, fortifying versus leveraging and fine tuning the supporting marketing program. This is very important because uh, this aspect not only supports, uh, you know, a progression from uh, stage 1 to customer mindset, the stage 2 of value, uh, brand value chain, but also it is very important for us to develop a robust brand architecture as well. When we say supporting marketing program, but this, when, when I am mentioning about this here, so this is fine tuning the supporting, uh, uh, tuning of the uh, supporting marketing program because we are actually using an intermediary measure as far as this reinforcement thing goes. Reinforcement uh, may be thought of that there would be a time when we would be needing to reinforce the brand someday, that, that would be definitely the context when you are thinking in terms of brand architecture, but uh, not necessarily you would desire for that. So, that is, that is the main point because ultimately you always desire the equity to establish at a level wherein it starts paying for itself in a, uh, in a, in a longer, longer term. And what, what does maintaining brand consistency means? So, brand consistency leads consumers to get familiarized with the brand and enhance their perception about brand uniqueness resulting in brand reputation. 
Brands with shrinking research and development and marketing communication budgets run the risk of becoming technologically disadvantaged. Market leaders and failures are, are an aspect of as far as you know brand consistency wherein inadequate marketing support is an essentially dangerous strategy when combined with price increases. An example of a failure to adequately support a brand occurred to when Pan American uh, World Airways uh, you know uh, they, they could not do so well or compact PC could not do so well. These are examples given by authors to suggest that uh, you know retrospectively if we look into why brands uh, could not do so well then consistency emerges as a very important kind of a factor. So, and, and personally I, I always uh, think in terms of being successful and not so successful. Uh, I do not consider failure as an outcome anyways, uh, uh, it is it is my individual thought process because there are so much efforts which, which go into developing brands, so much of intelligence from all the sides which comes into play. So, so uh, as a, a scholar of strategy and marketing, I always think in terms of uh, you know that, that something uh, would have gone wrong which we could not foresee that that is my approach in terms of when when I talk about these kind of things basically. So, consistency and change managing brand equity with consistency requires making numerous tactical shifts and changes in order to maintain the strategic thrust and direction of the brand. The most effective tactics for a particular brand at any one time varies and the strategic positioning of many leading brands has been kept uniform over time by the retention of key elements of the marketing program and the preservation of brand meaning for example, Dettol antiseptic soap, a very consistent kind of an effort basically. Then comes in protection of sources of brand equity, though brand should always try to def, uh, you know uh, to defend the existing sources of brand equity, they should also look for potentially powerful new sources of equity potential has been a very important point of concern for us since the beginning of the discussion in terms of brand and branding. However, there is a very little need to deviate from a successful positioning unless the current positioning is being affected by some internal or external factor which is making it less powerful. I mentioned this earlier that repositioning is a tougher deal because changing the image altogether would not be so easy. Then you see Intel is an example. Intel has passed through many stages. Now today they have they have uh, they are they are enjoying huge customer acceptance. Uh, you know there there have been uh, kind of strategic changes which they have made in due course of time. There there has been a time when Intel had to think in terms of several kinds of production and operation systems which they could uh, you know uh, they could they could generate. Uh, uh, with the help of customer feedback by real uh, you know reanalyzing that that uh, uh, how important uh, uh, it is for the customer to have data security and those kind of things and when they gained this confidence from the side of the customer they became intel that means resembling power and safety and that is why we always say intel inside so, that is that is the kind of strength which they have gained. You can visit their website and the history uh, and several case studies on Intel to understand you know when and how they required to go for in terms of protecting the source of brand equity. Now, comes in fortifying versus leverage, leveraging. Fortifying refers to enhancing brand equity in terms of awareness and perception whereas, leveraging refers to making money from a brand taking advantage of the brand strength of course, one should and why not because ultimately at the end of the brand value chain you have to reach to the stockholders value and stakeholders value at large. Failure to fortify a brand might result in brand decay that means it brand in terms of its element of name might not vanish for a very 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 long time, but brand in, in terms of its totality the way the customer knows it 
might not be there and that is where brand decay comes in I would be talking about this and there would be no leveraging from the brand anymore so, so if, if you somehow you know do not fortify that so therefore there should be a proper balance between fortifying and leveraging brands the the point is that you know it's it's uh, probably you know while while talking about these I I, I think of uh, you know the fortresses wherein wherein you you keep strengthening the walls and you keep uh, taking the advantage of the level you have gained in terms of or, or the, the, the place where you have con, uh, constructed a fortress so that you can see the world and enemy cannot approach you. That is how things are you know fortifying and leveraging and but here in terms of uh, leveraging the, the only thing which we think of is capitalizing through earning more money on the brand. Zodiac is a very important example in terms of you know uh, when we talk of these concepts. In 1954, Zodiac received an order for importing silk fabrics into India. Although the buyer later somehow could not uh, uh, go along with the order and uh, probably did not accept that. And Zodiac, they took the delivery and converted the fabric into neckties. We all know that their neckties are a good product and they have, they have a strong brand value around that product and several other products they produce like shirts. By late 1960s, Zodiac began its foray into the nascent ready-made shirts industry. Not many players were there, there were some players but, but not many of them. So, so they, they entered into that space and you see situation starting from silk neckties to ready-made shirts and that is what we are talking of in terms of extension many a times in terms of reinforcement and then you know so on. So today Zodiac is a multinational organization worth more than 300 crores of you know uh, revenue. It is available in over 2000 multi brand retailers and more than 80 company managed stores nationwide. This data can be rechecked through credible sources or let us say their website but would be around somewhere what we are trying to mention. So please do not take this as a sacrosanct or, or let us say a fixed kind of uh, a data uh, and you, you, can, you can visit Statista for that to confirm with this. So and, and if there is a fluctuative mark so please excuse me for that. Now a story that began with a rejected consignment of silk fabric resulted in three distinct premium menswear brands thus bearing a proof to Indian entrepreneurship coupled with commitment to quality, clear positioning and creating value. So acumen in terms of developing brand strength, going ahead with the brand architecture you have in mind and I am you know reiterating those things with every example so as to be suggestive of the fact that ultimate objective is developing brand equity. So then you see fine tuning the supporting marketing program wherein brand reinforcement can be done through improving product related performance associations and non product related imagery associations as well. Product related performance associations wherein for brands whose core associations are primarily product related attributes and or functional benefits, innovation in product design, manufacturing and merchandising is especially critical to maintaining the enhancing brand equity. Example television, smartphones, cameras etc. So here product related performance is one of the most important components of as far as you know uh, fine tuning of the supporting marketing programs. And then there are non-product related imagery associations for brands whose core associations are primarily non-product attributes and symbolic or experiential benefits, relevance in user and usage imagery is especially critical to maintaining or enhancing brand equity. For example, TV channels, we have talked about Netflix, Walt Disney, we have talked about Disney World at length in one of my examples earlier. So, that is how you know when, when we talk of supporting marketing programs which is again an element of whatever we have been discussing. So I would be coming back to you with uh, you know yet again an, another aspect of revitalization 
and then I would be taking you towards repositioning and then towards if at all you know there is a brand demise decline whichever way we want to look at it someday it vanishes many a times it happens but then I would be coupling up that discussion with a brand life cycle in, in conceptual terms and then I will be culminating whole the discussion. So, so uh, just go along with me till then I will be coming back to you goodbye.